Um, so let's start our afternoon session. So first speaker will be uh, Kevin Morin um, at uh, Sogang University in Seoul. And he will speak about graph complexes of Lee by algebraids. So, vous m'entendez? Oui, très bien, merci. Uh, okay, so thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, also, we'd like to deeply thank the organizers for this uh, very nice conference. So it's a real pleasure for me to attend, even though um, in a virtual way. So precisely yeah, to, today, I would like to uh, discuss about some recent results that have been obtained in the context of uh, formal deformation quantization, and more precisely regarding the deformation quantization problem for Z by algebraids and the interplay between this and so-called graph complexity. So we explain uh, what I mean by that. But before, uh, let me start with some very general remarks regarding formal deformation quantization uh, by starting with the formal theorem. So this theorem has been uh, reviewed nicely uh, in previous talks, so let me be uh, a bit brief. So, okay, so in 97, uh, Maxim Konsevich um, constructed some explicit uh, Lee infinity quasi isomorphism between two differential Gaudi algebras, or DGLA. So, what we call the formality map. So this formality map provides some uh, equivalence between two differential Gaudi algebras. So on the one hand, we have Tipoli in the terminology of Konsevich, which, term, which stands from the uh, schrodinger gaudi algebra of polyvector field. So if we follow the philosophy of uh, Pierre Deligne, the deformation problems are controlled by differential Gaudi algebras, or Lee infinity algebras in the scenario case. So in this case, the schrodinger gaudi algebra will control the deformation of Poisson by vector. Okay, so in here I wrote the local formula, that is uh, the, the manifold is uh, taken to be Rm. So this is the local version. So on the one hand we have Tipoli, on the other hand we have Dipoli, which stands for the Orchi differential Gaudi algebra of multi-differential operators. And this will control deformation of uh, the classical product of functions, that is, we control star product. Okay, so the formality map provides some kind of equivalence between these two uh, DGLA, and so uh, because of this, we have some equivalence between the relevant uh, deformation problems that are controlled by these two differential Gaudi algebra. In particular, an important corollary of this formality theorem is that it provides a canonical quantization map um, as follows. So any Poisson by vectors can be quantized using this map. And uh, we can associate to any Poisson by vector on, on Rm the star products which quantize it. That is, the semi cascade data of the star product is the original Poisson by vector. So we can go from the semi-classical uh, level of Poisson vector to the quantum level of star product using this quantization map. Okay, so this uh, Konsevich quantization map is given by an expansion in terms of graphs, which should be crucial uh, for our purpose. And uh, so as I mentioned, I wrote only the local formula, but uh, this can be globalized. And so indeed, these maps, so this formality maps is in fact a set of maps, it's an infinity morphism. So this map satisfies some additional properties which allows the globalization. So in fact, we can generalize this to any arbitrary manifold, as has been shown explicitly by, by Dobushev. But uh, for the purpose of this talk, I will focus on the local uh, version. So all the, um, the formula we mentioned will be uh, local. So uh, I want more to focus on the algebraic uh, part of the story, which is which only deal with the local case, and not so much on the geometric part, which deals with uh, globalization. Okay, just to fix idea, let me um, provide some explicit formula for at least for the first orders of this uh, Konsevich star product. Uh, formula. So if Rm pi is a Poisson manifold with pi is a Poisson by vector, then we can write the first orders using the Konsevich formula as follows. So the quantum object is a star product, which is a um, uh, formal um, power series in uh, h bar, uh, which, where h bar is a formal parameter. So the zero further in h bar is a so-called classical uh, level, which is uh, nothing but the usual um, product of functions on the manifold. The semi cascade level, so the first order in h bar is given by the Poisson bracket. So here I use a graphical uh, depiction in which arrow stands for um, uh, partial derivative. So here, this is nothing but the Poisson bracket acting on these two functions, f and g. Okay, and we have some uh, higher order. So this is uh, the order at, um, uh, I mean, the expression at order two in uh, h bar, which should like this. And we have like this an infinite power series. So the resulting quantization formula is associative. That means that we retain the associativity of the classical product. So we relax the commutativity, but we somehow we want to keep associativity. So the quantum object is also associative. It is universal in the sense that it is, uh, on the one hand, it is valid for any Poisson by vector. 
So here we can put any Poisson vector pi on Rm. And the formula is the same. Uh, and also, it is also the same for any finite dimension. So in particular, these weights, these coefficients here, do not depend uh, on the dimension. So this formula is universal. It is valid for any Poisson vector in any finite dimension. Okay, and uh, in fact, these weights um, are, so this formula is transcendental in the sense that these weights involve some uh, integrals over configuration spaces of points, and has been nicely reviewed uh, yesterday by Eric Panzer. And um, so, yeah, so these are transcendental, but they are uh, universal, so we need to compute them and once and for all. And then the, uh, we have our formula for any Poisson vector. Okay, uh, another property is the fact that this formula reduces to the Moya star product for constant pi. So if pi is constant, in particular for sympathetic manifold, we can use the double coordinate so that locally we have a constant Poisson by vector. And so any graph such that uh, there is an incoming arrow on a, on a Poisson by vector, we just cancel. And then we will just end up with the, the Moya uh, star product. Okay, so this, uh, I mean, more generally, this uh, quantization formula can be interpreted as a Feynman layer of expansion associated to the BV quantization of the so-called Poisson sigma model. So this is uh, a sigma model introduced by uh, Ikeda and Scheller and Strobel, which um, has a source of dimension d equal to. This will be I mean, important for us in the theorem. And this has been shown explicitly by Cateno and Feder in 1990. Okay, final remark about this formula is the fact that uh, it features some so-called cycle graphs. So a cycle is a directed path which starts at the vertex and ends back at the same vertex. And the presence of such cycle graphs, in fact, prevents the formula to, uh, from being valid for infinite dimensional manifolds. So such graphs will bring some uh, traces of infinite dimensional matrices, which will be E-defined I mean, when M is infinite. So it's only valid for finite dimensional manifolds. <clears throat> okay, so the formality theorem of Konsevich, meaning the existence of such a formality map. Uh, so it settles positively the formality conjecture that Konsevich formulated around 93. And at such, it provides a complete solution to the deformation quantization problem for Poisson manifolds, which were, was sorry, which was formulated uh, 20 years before. Uh, so by this uh, gentleman at the end of uh, the 70s. So we have a complete solution for the quantization problem for Poisson manifolds. Uh, so a natural question that one may ask is, is this solution unique? So in other words, is the Konsevich formality map unique? Or is the canonical uh, Konsevich quantization map really canonical? So for example, uh, I mean, can these weights, or are they completely determined by the fact we have an associative product, or can we find some other set of weights weight, such that we still have an associative product? So the, I mean, the answer to this question is known. Um, in fact, it was first conjectured by Konsevich that um, formality is not unique, and there is in fact an infinite dimensional set of formality maps. So the set of formality maps is uh, a principal homogeneous space or a torsor for uh, infinite dimensional group, the so-called Gotenic Takmuller group introduced by Dreyfus. And this has been shown explicitly um, in using the work of Tamarkin, Vilbacher, and Dolgushev. You can show that indeed, uh, this is not a unique formality map, but there is a, I mean, a whole family of formality maps, which is acted upon by this infinite dimensional group. So there is an action of GRT1 on these formality maps. So this group is a bit still a mysterious group, which appears in a variety of different contexts. Uh, in different areas of mathematics. In particular, it uh, acts also on another set, which is the so-called set of Dreyfus asphyter, which has also been introduced by Dreyfus. So we have somehow two, um, two, two uh, GRT1 torsor, the Dreyfus asphyter on the one hand and for my team on the other hand. And in fact, there is a bijection between the two. So the Tamarkin construction to construct a format maps takes as input a Dreyfus asphyter. So the, given the inference header, we can build some, um, some formality map. And this map is in fact a, a bijection, which is equivalent with respect to GRT1. Okay, so we have this, um, I mean, this group appearing naturally in uh, the context of deformation quantization for Poisson manifold. But as it turns out, it also, appear, uh, it also appears in the context of deformation quantization for another problem, so the one of Lie algebra. So basically, the, these are the two uh, formal deformation quantization problems for which we have a complete solution. And both of them involve both the inferior scatters and the GRT1 group. So for Lie algebra, uh, the solution has been given by uh, Ettinghoff and Kasdan. And this, I mean, this construction has been put within the setup of formality theorem by, uh, by Merkudov later on. Okay, so we have these two problems uh, which admit uh, known solutions. 
and which feature these two infrastructures in GR2. So natural question that one may ask is, can one, can one unify this uh, quantization problems for Poisson manifolds and nearby shaders? So in order to do this, we will need to, to find some unifying framework in order to deal uh, both with uh, Poisson and Yiba algebra. So this framework is, I mean, a natural candidate for this unification is given by uh, so-called Yiba algebra, which has been introduced by McKenzie and Xu in 84. So let me provide some definition. So let's recall that a Lie algebra is a vector bundle, so E over a manifold M, which is ended with the following structure. So on the one hand, we have uh, a morphism of vector bundle between the vector bundle and the tangent bundle of the base manifold, known as the anchor. And also the space of sections of the vector bundle is ended with a bracket. And these two maps satisfy some natural compatibility conditions. So first of all, the, the bracket is a Lie bracket. So it satisfies the Jacobian entity and it is Q symmetric. And also it enjoys the Leibniz rule uh, in which we use, I mean, the, the anchor in order to write the derivation property. Okay, so this defines a uh, Lie algebra. So examples of this kind of objects are, um, uh, of course, Lie algebras. So if M is just a point, the point manifold, then uh, this definition of Lie algebra reduces to the notion of Lie algebra. So any Lie algebra is in fact Lie algebra, kind of trivially one. Um, also, a kind of standard example is given by the tangent bundle of the manifold. So when E is just TM, then the anchor is just a morphism from TM to itself, which is the identity. And as brackets, uh, we just take the Lie bracket of vector field, which are the section on, on TM. So this is so-called standard uh, Lie algebra. Uh, more interesting is uh, on the cotangent bundle of a Poisson manifold, so we have, um, we can also define a Lie algebra structure on T star M, if M is Poisson. And uh, indeed, the anchor is just given by the Poisson by vector itself. And the bracket is also constructed in terms of the Poisson by vector. Okay, so we have this example of Lie algebra. Now, uh, let me define what is a Lie by algebra. So as the name suggests, we need somehow to double uh, this Lie algebra structure. And indeed, so Lie by algebra is given by a vector bundle, so E over M, which is handled with two Lie algebra structures, one on E itself and one on the dual, on E star. So we have these two distinct Lie algebra structures, which are made compatible in some natural way. So we have this kind of quadratic compatibility condition between the two. Okay, so natural example of this are um, of Lie by algebra. So same reasoning as before. If M is just a point manifold, then the axiom of this reduces to Lie by algebra. So Lie by algebra is a vector space such that we have a Lie algebra structure on V and a Lie algebra structure on V star, so that they are compatible in some way. And um, so this is a particular example of Lieb algebra. And also, uh, so the two algebra I introduced before on TM and T star M, they are in fact a particular example of Lieb algebra. So they are compatible uh, in uh, this particular way. So indeed, this notion of Lieb algebra is unified both Lieb algebra and Poisson manifold in this way. Okay, so we have this unification on the T poly side, let's say on the semi classical side. Now, can we find some um, some unification at the quantum side. Okay, so we'll be um, okay, a bit brief on this, but the idea is that uh, indeed we can, so we can formulate a deformation contraction problem for Lieb algebra, which somehow unify the one for Poisson and, and Lieb algebra. In this case, the uh, associated quantum object is given by a, uh, an associative by algebra. So it's kind of associative version of the Lieb algebra. And this notion unifies both the notion of star product and by algebra. Or quantum group. Okay, let me pass briefly over the definition. So the definition is a bit uh, intricate uh, of uh, incentive by algebra. It's much more intricate than the usual definition, I mean, definition of star products or by algebra. So let me uh, pass away and just mention that, um, so if we are given a Lie algebra, then uh, we can consider the universal enveloping algebra of this Lie algebra. And uh, this universal enveloping algebra is naturally handled with a co-commutative by algebra structure. So this is somehow the equivalent of the classical uh, product of functions on the manifold. It is a classical part of the construction. And so the quantum object will be uh, a deformation of this classical object. So more precisely, the quantum object in this context is a quantum group oil, which is uh, a bi-algebraic deformation of this universal enveloping algebra. And one can show that indeed the semi-classical notion, uh, the semi-classical part of this deformation is indeed a Lie algebraic structure on E. So this was shown by Xu in 97. And he formulated the, I mean, the natural quantization problem in this case. So to 
any Z biogebrid, can we always associate a biogebrid deformation or, or quantum group? Okay, so this problem is still open in full generality, uh, as well as informality a long time ago. But we know some particular examples which are quantizable, which are precisely the examples that we are interested in. Uh, that is uh, for Lie algebra. So we have the Entikov cast down construction, which provides some, some examples of um, quantization when, when the Lie algebra is a Lie algebra. So in this case, we have an explicit construction. And also for the Lie algebra associated to Poisson manifolds, one can show that the Konsevich construction, uh, the star product construction, in fact provides. Um, uh, a quantization of the associated Lie algebra. So indeed, we can define such quantum group read by twisting um, somehow this universal mapping algebra using a star product. Okay, so indeed, this quantization problem unifies both the one for Lie algebra and the one for Poisson manifold. Okay, so given this, uh, we can formulate two natural conjectures, as has been done uh, in the literature. So in 97, Xu uh, formulated the following conjecture that every Z algebra is quantizable as a quantum group. Rate. That means that we can find a, a quantization map. Uh, so we can solve this quantization problem. So every Z algebra is quantizable. So this is a natural conjecture that can be made, given that we know that it is the case for Z algebra and Poisson manifold, which are particular examples. Also, we know that there is some, um, some action of GRT1 on these two uh, quantization problems. So, and also a natural conjecture is that the space of quantizations for Lie algebra is a GRT1 torso. So there is some action of GRT1 on this space of quantization. So these are two natural conjectures that has been made in the literature. But uh, in fact, in this talk, I would like to argue that probably, um, I mean, I, will, I, will, I would like to give some counter argument in order to, I mean, to give the idea that in fact, this conjecture might be false, both of them. Okay, so let me uh, sum up, um, I mean, the main point um, of this talk. So the main point I would like to make is that um, if we're interested in a deformation quantization problems, more precisely, if we're interested in universal solutions to a given deformation quantization problem, then this universal solutions, so solution given in terms of graph, let's say, these universal solutions are characterized by the cohomology of suitable graph complexes that we do not co collectively as a GC. Okay, so what do I mean more precisely? Uh, I mean that to, to any, uh, Quantization problem, we can associate a graph complex, and by studying the cohomology of this graph complex, we can obtain some non trivial information regarding uh, the deformation uh, problem. So, in particular, if we look at the first order cohomology, then uh, I mean, the obstruction to the existence of universal solutions will precisely live in the first order cohomology. In particular, if the first order cohomology vanish, vanishes, then there is no obstruction and we can always contact. So, this would be interesting uh, if this is okay. And also regarding classification. So if quantization is possible, we are interested in classifying the space of universal solution. And in fact, this universal, uh, I mean, the space of universal solutions will be classified by the zero further cohomology. So by studying these two cohomological space, we can obtain some information about uh, quantization. So this approach, I mean, already exists in the literature that's been successfully applied uh, to different quantization problems. So, the prominent example is, of course, Poisson manifolds in finite dimension. So, in fact, this is the original approach followed by Konsevich. In when he stated the formality conjecture, he used it, used it, sorry, he used precisely this kind of uh, arguments coming from graph complexes. And this has been later on, I mean, built upon um, by Vivacher. Also, uh, this can be also applied to understand uh, the obstruction to quantize in, in infinite dimension. So it is known that uh, there is some obstruction to, to build a star product, which um, do not feature this, uh, these cycles, so which would be valid in arbitrary dimension, including infinite. And um, this obstruction has been understood, um, again by Vivacher, in terms of uh, precisely this uh, cohomology of graph complexes. Also, it has been applied to Lieber algebras. So the aim of this talk will be to add uh, two threads to this ongoing story by discussing Lie algebra and so an extension of Lie algebra, which is known as quasi Lie algebra. Okay, this is what I will do in the remaining uh, time. Okay, and so the result I would like to uh, put forward is that, um, so indeed using this cohomology, uh, we can somehow partition the deformation quantization problems into different categories. Because, I mean, the, there, there will be different graph complexes acting on different quantization problems. So, uh, there will be different cohomology. And so we can somehow partition 
these problems into different categories. So this is the results that are already available in the literature. Is the fact that somehow we have two main categories. Uh, a yes-go category, I would say, and a no-go category. So the yes-go category is a category in which everything works fine, in which uh, conjecturally there is no obstruction to the quantization, no obstruction to the existence of universal solutions. And also um, the space of universal solutions is classified by the containing type mirror algebra. It means that there will be some action of the containing type mirror group on the space of conservation. And this is, uh, I mean, this case is a case of post manifold in finite dimension and also Lie algebra and their extension known as a quasi Lie algebra. Okay, so this is <coughs> somehow the nice uh, category. <coughs> uh, a bit less nice category is, um, so this one, which I call no-go, in which we have some non-trivial obstruction to the quantization. So H1 is not zero, there is some uh, one-dimensional obstruction. So this is actually the case for Poisson manifold in infinite dimension. You, you can show that using this graph complex argument, you can show that Poisson manifold in infinite dimension belong to this category. And so there is some obstruction and the obstruction is heat, so that there is no quantization. You cannot quantize um, using this framework. And also another difference, the fact that there is no action of GRT1. So here, uh, there is no classifying role played by GRT1. Okay, so this is the result already available. I would like to add these two uh, threads. And, and in particular, I would like to add Lie algebra And a bit surprisingly, I would like to show that. So although we introduced Lie algebra as a unification of Poisson and Lie algebra, so we could expect that, oops, sorry. We could expect that the relevant quantization problem is close to Lie algebra. But in fact, I would like to argue it is more close to this uh, infinite dimensional Poisson manifold. So we will show that there is some obstruction to the quantization of Lie algebra. And in particular, there is no role uh, played by the Gauteng technology. So this is somehow a negative result. Uh, a more positive result is the fact that if we extend the notion of Lie algebra to so called quasi Lie algebra, then uh, we recover, sorry, we recover the, the nice category. So quasi Lie algebra can be shown to belong to this, um, to this category. So there are more chance to be able to quantize if we go from quasi Lie algebra rather than if we go to Lie algebra. Okay, so in the remaining time, I would like to, um, I mean, uh, provide some, some ideas of the tools we can use in order to, to find the, such a result. And uh, okay, first of all, I would like to describe what one might call the armchair formality theory. So it's a way to do formality theory, but just focusing on the typology side. So we don't want to be somehow bothered by uh, all this uh, complication in conservation formative uh, construction, like this, uh, I mean, this weight and so on. So we want to focus just on what happens on the typology side. And in fact, just by doing so, we can say some, we can make some non-trivial statements uh, regarding formality. So this is what I will explain using the example of, of the polyvector field. So as is well known, there is a, we have the um, orchid kosten rosenberg map, which provides a quasi isomorphism of complexes between T poly and D poly. So this is just a map of complex. So it, it just says that T poly is a cohomology of D poly. And uh, okay, the question, the question we are facing when we address formality is, can we upgrade this U1 to a full lean infinity quasi isomorphism? So such that the, so this doesn't know about the bracket. So we want also to preserve the bracket. So can we upgrade this to a lean infinity quasi isomorphism? And in fact, on general grounds, if we use the homotopy transfer theorem, this theorem ensures that D poly is necessarily quasi isomorphic as a infinity algebra to T poly but uh, the twist is T poly should be handled with um, a Lie infinity structure which deforms the original uh, Schrotten Grady algebra. But in other words, the homotopy transfer theorem um, prescribes, I mean, uh, ensures that there exists some Lie infinity quasi isomorphism between T poly and D poly. So D poly is the usual D poly, the Orchid, uh, um, the Orchid algebra, Orchid DJ. Um, but on the T poly side, we have some, uh, a priori, some deformation of the Schrotten algebra. So we have a L, L is an infinity structure, an infinity algebra. So we have this um, sequence of uh, brackets. So the first orders coincide with the um, Schrotten Gadi algebra. So L2 is a Schrotten bracket. But a priori, we have some non trivial L3, L4, and so on. Of course, if we can show that this L3 and 4, and so this higher bracket vanish, then we prove formality because we have some. Um, some Lie infinity quasi isomorphism between the genuine T poly and D poly. But a priori, this is not guaranteed. This is precisely the essence of the formative theorem is to 
is to show that we can uh, somehow put the Visaya brackets to zero. OK, but this is interesting because it allows to address formality just by studying the space of lean infinity structures that deform typoid. For example, if we can show that there is no such lean infinity structure that non trivially deform typoid, that is, if typoid is a rigid, then um, we, we can show formality this way. Because since there is no L which, which non trivially deforms typoid, then uh, that means typoid is necessarily formal. OK, so this, uh, I mean, what? I call it armchair formality theory because you can do formality just by studying what happens on typoid. And uh, precisely, the relevant deformation theory is, control, is controlled by the chevalier Lambert differential Gaudi algebra on, of typoid. Okay, so just uh, again by studying this cohomology, so the cohomology of the chevalier Lambert uh, algebra of typoid, then we can obtain some variable information. So again, we can have some information about the existence of formality maps uh, since the obstruction live in H1. And uh, the space of formality maps is also classified by H0. Okay, but so up to now, there is no mention of graphs. So, so graphs enter if one focus on universal formulas. So if you want a formality map given like the conservative one in terms of graphs, then these obstructions, uh, this relevant cohomology, in fact, um, is given in terms of the uh, sub DGLA, which is built in terms of graphs. So we can somehow provide a model for this uh, chevalier Lambert cohomology of typoid given by a graph context or graph DGL. Okay, let me very briefly uh, provide some ideas of what kind of graphs we use in this context. So this is a, a typical example of graphs. So we have these vertices and this um, uh, set of vertices and a set of arrows. In fact, these graphs, uh, they have a nice structure that form uh, what we call an opera. So we have some, uh, I mean, elements and so an opera is a sequence of um, vector spaces. These vector spaces are spanned by linear combination of these directed graphs. Okay, we'll be a bit quick on this. The important part is that we have some partial composition operation. So given two uh, graphs, we can somehow compose them by uh, insertion. So here, we can insert the second graph into the second vertex of the first graph, like this. And then the, I mean, the summation is made by, um, by um, uh, gluing, I mean, the, by summing over all the possible way to connect the dangling uh, edges. So we, what we obtain is this uh, linear combination of graphs. So this is a partial composition operation which endo this, um, this uh, vector spaces of graphs with the structure of an opera, which is nice because in particular, it allows to define some graded algebra of graph. Okay, again, I will be very quick because time is running back. Um, okay, just yeah, I mean, the important Part is that so we have a graded algebra, so we can define using this partial composition operation, we can define some bracket. We can also define differential because this uh, graph is a more carton element. So just by taking the adjunct action, we can define differential. So we have a differential graded algebra of graph. Okay, so this DJLA is controlled, I mean, it's parameterized by a parameter D, which uh, is in fact corresponds to the source of the, to the dimension of the source manifold in the relevant Akaezi sigma model. So for D equal to, we have the Poisson sigma model. So the source has dimension two. That means this D should be two. And for Lie algebra, Lie algebra and co algebra and so on, we will have D equals three. So, so this D uh, somehow is important to compute the degree of the graphs. And also, I mean, the symmetries will, will depend on the parity of D. So for different D, we will have different graph complexes. This is the idea. And this D corresponds to uh, this dimension of the source of uh, sigma model. Okay, let me uh, move on. So, okay, so this uh, graph opera acts on the space of polyvector fields. So, if we put d equal to, then the space of polyvector fields carries a representation of for this graph opera. That means that any graph will be mapped to a multidifferential operator which acts on typoid itself. So, this is the explicit expression where we use the fact that uh, typoid admits um, a graded geometric formulation where p is a coordinate of degree one. Okay, let me be a bit quick on this. Um, so just two examples. So we have uh, this disconnected graph is mapped. Uh, so Xi1 and Xi2 are two poly vector fields. This disconnected graph is mapped to, um, to the wedge product of vector field, of poly vector field. Whereas this map with one arrow is mapped to the Schrotten bracket. So like this, we can, I mean, given graphs, we can map them to multi-differential operators, which acts on typoid. And we preserve the space of typoid, of poly vector field. Okay, so this defines a universal model. And again, the idea is uh, we want to study the cohomology of this graph complex in order to obtain some 
uh, information about formality. So the question is, what is known about the cohomology of this graph? So in so we want d equal to in order to, for Poisson manifold. So what is known about the cohomology of GC2? So okay, it is a hard open conjecture. Then the first order cohomology vanishes. In fact, this was the original strategy of uh, Kontsevich to show that this vanishes in order to show that um, we can always quantize. But in fact, this is even harder than to solve the formality. Uh, I mean, to write the formality theorem. Okay, and uh, regarding the, um, the the classification, then it has been shown by uh, Vivacher that the zero further cohomology identifies the Gauteng Techno algebra. So this is a rationale for the um, the fact that we have some action. Of the of GRT one on the space of quantization, all of this can be understood in terms of this action of graphs on the space of polyvector field. So uh, we can understand all of this just at the level of T poly without even knowing D poly. Okay, so uh, this is what happened for the Poisson case. But in fact, so so graphs come in different flavors. So for Poisson manifold, the relevant graph complex is the one we just saw, so directed graphs with D equal to. But for Lie algebras, we need to to use some oriented graphs. So by oriented, I mean the graphs without cycles. So we see an example, two examples of cycles. So a directed path from one vertex to itself. So we need to get rid of all of these uh, cycle graphs and uh, focus on so-called oriented graphs, the graphs that do not contain such cycles. And this is the graph where we preserve Lie algebra. So if we want to act on Lie algebra, we need to, uh, to use only this, uh, this space of graphs. Okay, and why is this important? Because uh, the cohomology of the graph complex, so we, which we are interested in, it depends on both the dimension D. So here, uh, Poisson and Bajaba have uh, two different dimensions, but also it depends on the number of oriented colors. And uh, in fact, there is a deep theorem uh, due to Vivara and extended by Zivkovic, who show that there is some isomorphism of graded Lie algebras between the cohomology in D dimension with C oriented colors and uh, in one dimension uh, more. With one more oriented color. So, what does it mean? Uh, in particular, so Poisson manifold, we have zero oriented colors because we, I mean, we accept all the graphs. <clears throat> Whereas for Lie algebra, we have one oriented color. So, using this theorem, we can show that, in fact, the two cohomology here that are relevant for these two cases are, in fact, equivalent or isomorphic. So, from this, we can deduce that um, the deformation quantization point for Lie algebra is, in fact, similar to the one for finite dimensional Poisson manifold. And indeed, we have these two, uh, I mean, two results that apply uh, as well in the Poisson manifold case as the Lie algebra case. Okay, another case I mentioned briefly is the one for um, sympathetic manifold. So in this case, we have D equal one and Poisson manifold with infinite dimension in which we need some oriented graphs because as we saw the cycles, they introduce some um, infinite traces, which are ill-defined. So we need to eliminate these graphs. So we need to resort to oriented graphs. But here we are in D equal two, with one oriented direction. Again, the, the, um, the cohomology is the same. And uh, <clears throat> in particular, in a first order cohomology, there is a non trivial obstruction. So for sympathetic manifold, this, this obstruction corresponds to the Moyal um, Lie algebra. And for Poisson manifolds, it corresponds to a new uh, exotic Lie infinity structures on Tipoli for infinite dimensional manifold. This is known as the Concevich Shocket Lie infinity algebra. Which deforms non trivially the Schratten bracket of polyvector field. So, this <coughs> again, this uh, exotic uh, structure can be, um, can be seen as the incarnation in D equal 2 of the Moya Lie algebra structure in D equal 1. So, since we have this, uh, this theorem, we can somehow map um, structures on one dimension to structures in higher dimension. So, this is what happened here. The Moya Lie algebra structure in D equal 1 is mapped to the, this concept circuit obstruction in D equal 2. And this provides some obstruction to the existence of oriented star products on infinite dimensional manifolds. So we cannot quantize infinite dimensional manifolds. So there is an obstruction to this existence. And also the group GRT1 doesn't pay a classifying. Okay, this, is, this will be my last slide uh, before concluding. <clears throat> so let me just briefly um, mention about how we can apply this kind of technology to Lie algebra. So in the case of Lie algebra, we need to uh, use uh, yet another type of graphs, which are graphs with two colored, uh, two colors. So we have both red and black arrows, which can be in both ways or in opposite way. And uh, so one can show that um, in order to act on Lie algebra, we need to orient both directions. So we have D equals three and C equals two. Whereas for quasi Lie algebra, we need to orient only one direction. So again, since the number of oriented directions is different, the cohomology will be different. 
Okay, so again, if we use the previous theorem, then we can uh, show the so-called uh, no-go theorem for Lieb algebra and show that in fact, this conservation problem is more similar to the one of Poisson manifolds in infinite dimension. In particular, uh, we can show that there is some uh, exotic infinity structures uh, on the deformation complex of Lieb algebra. So this is somehow the incarnation in D equals three of the Moya star product, I mean, the Moya commutator in D equal one and the concevich circuit obstruction in D equal two. So again, this uh, structures um, incarnates itself in D equal three as a non-trivial exotic structure on Lieb algebra. And this provides some obstruction to the conservation. Uh, so on the contrary, if we focus on quasi Lieb algebra, then since the number of direction is uh, one less, one less, then it is more akin to the deformation conservation for Poisson manifolds in finite dimension. And in particular, uh, it provides a nice uh, new incarnation of the Grotelli technique group, uh, which can be shown to act on the deformation complex of quasi Lieb algebra. So it doesn't act on Lieb algebra itself, but it acts on this generalization, which is quasi Lieb algebra. Okay, let me conclude. So uh, I would like to emphasize the fact that in the deformation contention problems can be partitioned uh, by graph cohomology. So we have these two uh, broad categories. And um, right, so the contention problem for Lieb algebra is due to this, the fact that it belongs to this no-go class. In fact, it differs essentially from the Lieb algebra case in the sense that there is a potential obstruction to the existence of universal conservation. And also GRT1 does not play any classifying role. So this allows to, to formulate a new conjecture, which is somehow the opposite of the one formulated by Xu uh, in 97, which is that there are no universal quantizations for Lieb algebra as quantum group rates. So it's still a conjecture because, so we show that there is some obstruction, but we need to show that the obstruction is hit. So this is the case for infinite dimension Poisson manifolds, but uh, this needs to be shown for Lieb algebra. And this is a challenging problem because it requires a better understanding of the deformation theory for Bi algebra. So Bi algebra is a quantum object, the equivalent of star products. So we know the quantum object, but we, we don't know yet the deformation theory. So we don't know yet Dipoli. That's why we, I mean, we use this kind of, uh, um, this kind of technique that focus on Dipoli side because we don't know Dipoli. Okay, and finally, uh, if we resort to quasi Lieb algebra, then the conservation problem becomes similar to the one for uh, Lieb algebra. So conjecturally, there is no generic obstruction to conservation and uh, GRT1 plays a classifying role. And again, we can conjecture that given the inference factor, uh, one can define universal conservation for uh, quasi Lieb algebra as quasi quantum group rate. This is somehow, again, uh, a new conjecture that can be, can be shown. Okay, I will uh, stop here. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for your very interesting talk. So are there questions? <laughs> Hi, um, so, so I, I have a couple of, of questions. So, so first of all, I didn't understand why you say uh, that the kind of graph that you need to quantize Levi algebra are G, uh, how is that? With, uh, yeah, that, that's it. So with, with two colors, wh where this comes from? Right, right, so it's not obvious here. Uh, okay, maybe if you allow me, I will go to, I have some appendix section where maybe this is ex explained a bit more detail. Right, so um, so all of this construction, so um, I didn't mention it explicitly, but they they uh, use the fact that we um, we can formulate all these structures as Hamiltonian and function on graded sympathetic manifold. So this is the case for Poisson uh, manifold where we can formulate them on uh, T star uh, one of M, so the shifted cotangent bundle. So there are Hamiltonian and functions there. So for the Lieb Bajewit case, the graded sympathetic manifold is given by uh, T star uh, two E one. So basically we have a I mean, given the vector bundle, we can define this graded symplectic manifold. And this is the form of the symplectic form. Okay, so we have uh, two sets of Dirac coordinates, which are x mu and p mu. p mu is at uh, degree two. And we have this uh, xi and zeta, which are both of uh, degree one. Okay, so the idea is that uh, since we have two, um, two sets of uh, coordinates, then we need somehow two colors. So the explicit uh, <coughs> construction is to map each arrow where the, the, um, the arrows point in the same direction. 
we map them to this operators, which acts only on the on the XP part. Sure. Whereas if the arrows are in opposite direction, then uh, we it will act on this side data part. So this is the so this is the crux of the construction. And uh, why do we need to orient? Because I mean, as shown in this uh, on this example, if we so let's consider this graph, which is uh, oriented in uh, so there's no cycle in black direction, but there is a cycle in the red direction. So okay, so this is the form of the operator which is uh, obtained by using this uh, this uh, representation map. So we obtain this differential operator acting on functions on the sympathetic manifold. So we have yeah this pre this precise form of the of the operator. So now if we consider some um, some functions which uh, belong to the to I mean the idea is that um, the I think that I understand it. So so just as a okay. sorry. So, so just as a remark, um, I can tell you. That in this degree two manifold, the fact that this symplectic, the degree one coordinates already determine everything. So the degree zero and two coordinates can be obtained just by looking into the degree one coordinate and the symplectic structure. Um, we, we can talk later about that, but 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 yeah. Another question that I have is uh, recently Pablo Severa was uh, proposing or was computing quantization for Lie by algebraids and computing some graph that, that I think that it should be similar to the ones that, that you have. Do you know if there exists any relation? Harry, no, so I'm not aware of this. Uh, so when, the, when did this appear? It's uh, recently Jan Pullman and Pavel Severa. Okay, great. Okay, uh, I don't know about this work, but I will check it out, definitely. And, uh, yeah, thank you. thank you for mentioning. And the other thing is, I don't understand why Levi algebra should be two colors, why quasi Levi algebra is just one color. Right, right. So, so both of them should be two colors. Uh, the, the difference is in the number of oriented colors, right? So, um, yeah, so this is, uh, I mean, a table which uh, sums it up. So, okay, basically, we have uh, four different flavors of Levi algebra. We have this proto Levi algebra. Where we, so this is a generic Hamiltonian function for this uh, gradient symplectic manifold. Mm -hmm. So if this phi and psi vanishes, then we have a Lieb algebra. If only this phi vanishes, then we have a quasi Lieb algebra. And if only psi vanishes, we have a Lie quasi, which is a kind of your. And if none of them vanishes, we have proto. And for each of them, there is a different uh, graph action. So this is for proto, then it is just a plain operad when we, we don't orient any, uh, any direction. But for Li quasi and quasi, we need to orient one direction. So direction, I mean, which direction depends on the, if we are Li quasi or the door. And I mean, the crux of the argument is that for uh, Li algebra, we need to orient both directions. So we need to get rid of the cycles in both directions. And getting rid of the cycles, it changes the cohomology. So this is, I mean, the, the basic argument. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that I see. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. There are other questions. I would have just um, a very long question. I try to <laughs> cut it short. Um, so all these um, the, the quantization problems, they are somehow, somehow distinguished by some of the quantizations are functors, like for uh, uh, the, the quantization problem for Lie by algebras, mm -hmm. or also for Lie algebraids. Yeah, in general, for the Reinhardt algebras, you always have universal enveloping algebra. All right. Mm -hmm. okay. And um, for others, you don't. For Poisson manifolds, there is no functor. I mean, mm -hmm. Poisson morphisms somehow, yeah, it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't work. It does, does this, so one question is, would that play a, a role. So I don't, for instance, for Lie by algebraids. Yeah. So Lie algebraids, this is uh, the quantization is a functor. You associate some 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 subalgebra of differential operators, and this is an, a left adjoint functor to to some suitable forgetful functor. And for um, Lie by algebras, you also have a 
the quantization functor is a left adjoint of the dequantization functor. And um, is this seen in the construction in some sense, with this categorical? Right, right, so, excuse me. Uh, so the short answer is no. But, I mean, at least I, I don't see how uh, one can see this distinction at the level of this graph quantity. So let me mention that, so Lie algebra, they doesn't fit into this feature somehow because um, we focus on, so semi cascade data, somehow they should be interpreted uh, as, um, I mean, they sh it should be possible to interpret them as Hamiltonian functions for a symplectic uh, gradient manifold. So in the case of um, Lie algebra, there is no, there is a graded formulation, which is given by a, um, just, um, I mean, a graded, uh, a differential graded manifold, but not symplectic one. So in order for this construction to work, uh, all this graph, uh, stuff and so on, we need to, to have, um, I mean, semi cascade data that can be interpreted as Hamiltonian and function on grid simplicity manifold. So the algebra somehow doesn't fit into this, uh, this setup. Okay. But uh, yeah, regarding the distinction between Poisson manifold and Lie algebra, uh, yeah, I'm not, I mean, at least I, I don't know, it's an interesting question, but I don't know how it can be possible to distinguish this uh, functionality um, difference at the level of this graph construction. But it's interesting, but I don't have yeah, anything to say about it. It's a long story, so, but uh, we, I think we have to stop. Mm -hmm. You want to ask another question? Yes. Hey, please. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I, I cannot hear. So, so just another first question. So do you think that there exists any relation between the quantization of Levi algebraids and the quantization of the Poisson group which integrate in the Levi algebra? Uh, yeah, it's another good question. Uh, no, for this, I don't have any clue, unfortunately. Um, yeah, no, sorry. I don't know so much about the integration um, procedure for the Levi algebra. <clears throat> so sorry, no, I don't have anything to say about it. Okay, further questions from the audience or from out there? Some things in the chat. Okay, that's the topic. Alors, un grand merci. Votre... Mm -hmm.